we have a lot of charts to go through, not only the end of the week, also the end of the month, and some really exciting action on Friday that we're going to take a look at. As always, I do this and I do my analysis on all of this, A, for some discretionary trading I still do, but B, and primarily because I want to know which of the algorithms I want to lean on on Stats Edge Trading. So if you're a Stats Edge Pro member, after I do this, I will run those algorithms, I'll put together all the data, and you guys will get a video on Sunday. So if you have not signed up for Stats Edge Trading yet, you definitely should. We're putting out some great ideas when it comes to the different algorithms we run. And the beauty of it is even in periods of it like this, which aren't the best, to be honest, to trade in, we have a plan and that plan doesn't change. So we can kind of take a deep breath and say, even when times aren't that fun, I know I'm going to come in next week. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to have 30 ideas. I'm going to comb through them. I'm going to take the entries and exits of the ones that I like. If they trigger, it just allows you to put your mind at ease. And there's been a lot of unease in the markets recently as we see, we're going to see. So let's go in here, let's take a start here with Bitcoin. And let's just start looking at kind of where a lot of the unease came from. I kind of drew this because that would be a potential bull trap or bear trap setup, but we're not seeing that yet. But we had seen Bitcoin completely fall to this range and then start to push much lower. This candle was actually really ugly in which we were all the way down to 77,000 at one point before recovering. So I think that is the point to watch right now. If we can hold on to that low, then that means that was a bit of a flush out. There was, you know, a bunch of margins getting called, people getting pushed out of positions and we we move higher. If that ends up breaking, that just means that it's just a continuation of a downtrend, and we were just a little bit overextended for the moment. So that's the price I'm going to watch. And to the upside, if we can get back into this range. So we talked about this range forever. I talked about how I wasn't really interested too much in crypto as a whole until this range resolved, but now it has. So now we need to see one of two things. One, if we get back into the range there, and then we start to push higher than anyone who shorted in this time or anyone who got liquidated, which you can track these things, there's a lot of liquidations going on. So it, those people may want to chase back in. So that may cause a little bit of a push higher. If we end up pulling back this shaded area is the next area that I want to watch because this is the lows from where we broke out of. So these, sorry, these highs from here around 72,000, that was where the breakout happened. So if we come back to that zone, that's what I want to watch really closely there just to see if that continues to be uh, the area of interest. Now, just a couple of, while we're on crypto, we can look at some other crypto stuff. Ethereum, still holding on to these lows right here has been a bit of dog of the space. Solana, however, that's holding on okay. Not very well, but okay to these lows as well. So a big level of support here for Solana. I think we really need to see this hold in order for the rest of them to end up working. Litecoin, LTC. LTC, USD, massive relative strength. I don't know when the last time I've actually owned any Litecoin or traded any Litecoin, but if we look at all the other currencies, the cryptos I've shown you, they're all near the low. This guy is near its, not all-time high, but recent highs here. So, so there's some good relative strength there that I want to keep an eye on. And Ripple, again, just at the low of this range. So a lot of cryptos near support. That support needs to end up holding in order to have us this be a short-term bounce uh, and put a push higher for sure. Now into the traditional markets, let's start with the dollar and just go in the Dixie and just show what's happening here where we had this prior range right here and a potential bear trap or bull trap where we pushed up above that range and we and we're pushing back down but we've just been consolidating here below that level. So really, I think this 106 area on the dollar index seems to be the most important. Below 106, maybe we're bleeding back into this range. But so far, it looks like we've broke out. That may have been a bull trap, but we might just be retesting 106 before moving higher. So right, the current levels to watch are 106 to the downside and about 110 to the upside. If we can get through 110, then the only thing standing in our way of new highs is 114 here. Now, the SPY gets really interesting here because we're going to look at some weekly candles and we're going to look at some monthly candles. So first of all, I want to do a monthly candle because everyone was freaking out a whole lot <laughs> when we were having, I'll show you the intraday action, but we were 
I think everyone is getting a little bit too crazy. You know, they were talking about potentially being the top of the market or whatever's happening. But now we've just kind of completed month four of doing nothing, right? There's four candles in a row here of really no action, just sideways kind of movement, topping tails and bottoming tails in each candle. If you look at this on the weekly chart, it just looks like this as well, where we have the lows right here and the highs right here. We came pretty much down to the lows and bounced pretty substantially on Friday there almost erasing this sell-off that happened. So it's more of the same. And this is why these videos have been a little bit shorter than normal when it comes to the weekend wrap-ups, because this, until this range resolves, I think everything contained in this range is just noise. And that's how I want to look at it as uh, as a trader. And, you know, one of the, and we'll talk a little, little bit more about this on Monday, but Jeffries, for example, Right. I bought Jeffries as a pullback here. That was the trade of the week that came from the algos. I'm going to start doing that on Monday. So make sure you're following or subscribing wherever you're seeing this. Because on Monday, I'll pick one of the setups from the algos and I'll just do a video about you know breaking it down. And, you know, not up a whole lot of money on it, not down a whole lot of money on it. Ended up being a decent little trade here. And, you know, same with Udemy. There was a lot of this where it came in. Uh, I got... Uh, unity, sorry, a little bit lower here and not up on it, really up a little bit, not down on it. A lot of that going on where, you know, we're trying to buy these pullbacks and then we're trying to scalp out higher as quickly as we can and just try to make something and try to churn. And that's kind of what this environment is doing to us and doing to the market is that you have to be buying dips, you have to be selling rips, you have to really shrink your expectations. And at some point, the range is going to break. And when the range breaks, either up or down, that'll be information and we can start going from there. But until that happens, we're range bound. So anyone who's being mega bearish out there, anyone who's being mega bullish out there, that's the, they're both being wrong, right? Now, when the SPY is rotating, that means generally speaking, under the hood, you have a lot of interesting things happening. So if we look at the cues, you can see the cues are relatively weak. And if you look at the monthly chart, right, closed red on red candle, whereas the SPY closes a green candle. So we're getting relative weakness here out of the cues. And you can see where the SPY was a little bit closer in the middle of the range, the cues are still at the low of the range here. So that's showing us that tech is relatively weak. Now, add to that, this is the Dow. And we all know what's in the Dow, it's the boring boomer stuff. That is relatively strong, right? If we go to the monthly chart, a little bit higher than the Qs. And if we go to the weekly chart, much higher if we're comparing this low right here than the Qs. So relative strength in names like boring things that uh, are in the Dow, which is more finance and healthcare. So we'll go through those as well. Right? This is a, another chart that's interesting if this loads correctly. This is Burke B., versus ARKK. So this is basically Warren Buffett versus Kathy Wood. And you can see a massive pop this week higher on this ratio. This is the ratio this week, massive pop. So Uncle Warren has just been destroying on Kathy, just showing that the stuff that Warren Buffett invests in is going to do way better or has been doing way better than the stuff that Kathy Wood would invest in. So more boring, more things that are real, things that pay us now, not things that on a hope and a dream will pay us too much in the future. So, right, Burke B hitting new all-time highs. That just shows that there are sectors out there that are looking really, really good. So, for example, ITA, which is our defense sector, you can see the nice little push-up that we've gotten this week closer to highs here. Right, and the massive rally we had here on Friday. We're above the AV wap from this high right here. I think we're getting close to above the AV wap from all time highs. Just add it. Uh, another couple sectors that look good financials, XLF. Look at the massive candle on Fridays or Friday when we're bopping up against all time highs on financials. Also, healthcare, XLV, that's doing well and not all time highs, but looks like it could be breaking out of this consolidated range that we're having here. So, just showing that. Other sectors, other than big, large cap tech names, are doing okay. So if you're someone who exclusively was trading large cap tech, 
you're going to have a bad time. It, it just seems like we're rotating out of that and we're rotating into other sectors of the market. And this is one thing the algorithms do really well. So for example, a late trade that triggered on Friday that I ended up taking was TW. Look at the massive breakout that could potentially be happening here on TradeWeb. This is the idea behind a lot of these systems. Forget the narratives. Forget the I'm the guy who only trades NVIDIA that kind of stuff, or I'm the only guy who trades big cap growth, I'm going to trade whatever the systems tell me to trade. I'm not going to take every trade that it tells me to do. I'm going to look at the charts. I'm going to, you know, use my technical analysis and take the ones that I like. Uh, but every trade has a complete trading plan built in around it. It says, right, buy here. This is when you'll sell. This is where the stop loss is. For me, it's just, do I want to take it or not? And that way I'm not attached. And I think that's part of the problem is a lot of people are going to be attached to different areas of the market and they're probably going to be attached to the thing that made them the most amount of money in the past so if I'm someone who I made a whole bunch of money in semiconductors in Nvidia and all of this type of thing what we're looking to do is we're looking to say hey I am going to be involved in the names that make the most sense, right? A lot of people go out there and say, okay, I made money in NVIDIA, I made money in AMD or Palantir or whatever, I'm only going to trade those names. Doesn't make any sense, right? You made money in NVIDIA and Palantir because they were trending at the time and they were in the news and they were interesting. That's going to change at some point. And at some point, it might be banks that we're seeing right now starting to break out. I'm going to make money in whatever I possibly can. I'm not going to pigeonhole. So look at creating systems for yourself if you're not interested in mine that just tell you what's breaking to new all-time highs and you change the things that you're going to invest in. Because I don't know what's going to happen in NVIDIA. It's possible that NVIDIA just does nothing for a long period of time. That's possible, right? Wouldn't, wouldn't be fun, but it's certainly possible. Just another couple interesting sectors. So LIT, with is a lithium and battery ETF. It's very interesting here, just at this prior breakout zone, you can see this $40 has been a big deal for this one. Pulling back down to it, I heard a lot of talk about lithium and things like that this week. I think this is more than just lithium. I think there's some uh, EV makers and everything in there, but a nice, interesting zone there. And then around the world a little bit, EWJ. Uh, EWJ is popping near highs here. And EW... And that's, sorry, that's uh, Japan. But EWJV is, let's do a weekly chart on this, will look better, is just consolidating here near all-time highs. So we are hanging out right here at all-time highs. And this is going to be, I think, like the Dow of Japan. Just to show EWU as well, which is the UK, that, you know, the rest of the world, some of these names are doing well. You could either trade the ETFs on this or potentially start looking at, okay, what's my favorite Japanese com com company or what's my favorite UK company or what's going on elsewhere. But I think the point of this is just to kind of say, yes, the market had a bit of a wild week last week. We have been stuck in a range for three months. That is frustrating some people, but I think it's frustrating the people who can't expand outside of the large cap tech. And it's frustrating people who aren't able to expand to other sectors, and in this case, kind of other countries. So whatever you do, you have to have a plan to kind of move from area to area. I remember giving the same speech to a lot of people after the pandemic, in which a lot of people were trading, back then it was what, Peloton, Zoom, DocuSign, a lot of these were pandemic darlings, they call them. They moved based off of the fact that we were in a pandemic, and then they all crashed. And everyone was kept asking me about these stocks. And the thing that I would keep saying is that the next massive bull run is probably going to be something else. And in this case, it was AI. And this is just what happens over and over and over again is that you have a theme and that theme carries us a bit. And then you either have a correction or in this case, consolidation in the market. And then a new theme picks up. And that new theme will rotate the market from the old theme into the new theme. And that will end up pushing us higher. I have no idea what the new theme is. If you do, fantastic. But just develop a system to say, this: these are the stocks that are trending. These are the stocks that are interesting for me to play. And then when and if we start to make new highs in the market, I don't know if it's tomorrow. I don't know if it's 
two years from now, but you will have that kind of game plan. Until then, I'm going to be very much still focused on the buy support, sell resistance, you know, mean reversion, pullback trading algorithms that we have in in the system. And I've been doing more and more even day trading. So it's one of those, if the market's getting choppy, you just have to shrink your time frame a little bit and say, okay, I'm going to focus on the things that are moving the most and just get in and get out is the best way to do it. There are times to be incredibly inactive and there's times to be incredibly active. And I think we're in one of those stages where it's time to be active and not go for the big win. And then hopefully if the market does break to new highs, then you can switch that thinking and say, okay, now let me grab a bunch of stocks that look good and let me go for a big win on those. It's the whole uh, saying that I always had when I was learning to trade from one of my mentors always said, your job is to stay alive until you can get lucky. And in this choppy market, it's very hard to get lucky and to hold on for a long period of time. So stay alive. Just try to, you know, get buy pullbacks, sell rips, do that. At some point, the market will start trending again. And that's when we'll have fun. Until then, and until next time, stay away from the screens.